I'm Mike Hannawald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, uh, here in front of a cornfield that's uh, tasseled and actually acti actively pollinating right now, one of the earlier planted uh, cornfields this year. And, and when we start to see the tassels emerge, it's time to think about fungicide applications. And so I uh, just wanted to give some general thoughts about that today. So uh, when it comes to fungicide timing, um, traditionally, uh, our, our best uh, time to spray a fungicide is right away at tassel. And, and we've seen that in PFR, that's our PFR proven timing is a VT application of fungicide. Um, however, uh, last year we did a, a new study in PFR where we spread that timing out. We looked at, can we be more specific with that timing than just saying after tassel? And so we tested um, an R1 application, which would be tassel, R2, which would be the blister stage, R3, which is the milk stage. I like to call that the sweet corn stage when you husk back that ear and it looks like a nice ear of sweet corn. Um, we tested all three of those timings and uh, we even went to R4 as well, but the R1 to R3 timeframe, all three of those timings uh, were profitable. And uh, you can see by the chart on your screen that R1 still had the best uh, yield that uh, last year but um, several of our sites had some disease pressure early. Um, and so that R1 application paid off really well. Um, but when we think about what diseases we're dealing with, especially the new one um, this year that we're seeing on a lot more, um, expecting to see in a lot more acres in Ohio and, and in uh, Northeast Indiana as well, is uh, tar spot. And tar spot has a tendency to move in a little bit later in the season. We don't wanna spray necessarily too early um, because our fungicide gives us two to three weeks of protection from disease. And if we spray it too early, the tar spot might move in after our fungicide is no longer effective and we lose that protection and might have to consider a second application. So my recommendation is gonna be to um, scout our fields pretty closely and try and spray as soon as we see the disease um, and delaying that application a little bit later if possible to uh, extend that window of protection further into the green field period. However, if you look at that data that we just, uh, that chart we just looked at, um, we were only profitable up until R3. And so if you aren't seeing disease at that sweet corn stage, but you still wanna make a preventative application, R3, the sweet corn stage, is the time to make that application. And then you're pretty well um, gonna have good protection for the rest of the greenfield period. Um, but I talked about having a scouting plan and, and identifying the disease. Now I know um, that we can't scout every acre of corn um, all the time. And you really need to be checking your fields every four to five days um, to be able to catch these diseases and make an application on time. And so to help to make a more practical um, scouting plan, identify which um, hybrids are most susceptible to the diseases that we're looking for. And so if you work with your local BEX representative, they can help you out in identifying which hybrids uh, you planted this year and what the, the disease response is and the fungicide response is to those hybrids and identify maybe maybe three or four fields that you wanna take a look at on a regular basis. And when you start to see disease there, then you start widening out your scouting plan to other fields. Um, because we saw very consistently last year that the, the fields that of the hybrids that were more susceptible to disease definitely showed the disease pressure early. When it comes to scouting, um, it's important to know what you're looking for. So we'll start with tar spot because that's the, the new one. Um, you're looking for black spots on the leaves. Um, the key thing though is that those spots show up on both the top and the bottom of the leaf and they're not easily scratched off. Uh, you might find black spots in your corn leaves that are easily scratched off. In that case, it's just uh, fly droppings or other residues left behind by insects. But if you can't scratch that off and it's visible on both the top and bottom side of the leaf, it's most likely tar spot and you're gonna wanna make an application very quickly, um, regardless of what position you find it on the plant. The other two diseases that we wanna keep an eye out for are gray leaf spot and northern corn leaf blight. So uh, northern corn leaf blight, the lesions you see on your screen, they're a little bit longer, wider, and a gray color. Um, they're sometimes described as being shaped like a cigar. Um, compared to gray leaf spot, which are gonna be smaller, narrower lesions, they stay between the leaf veins, and they're contrary to the name, they're actually oftentimes a brown color. And uh, so those are the two diseases that we wanna look for. When it comes to northern and gray, the position on the plant is important. We want to look at the ear and maybe just one or two leaves below the ear from that point up. If you see some gray leaf spot on the lower parts of the plant, that's normally not anything we need to be concerned about. But as we get within two leaves of the ear, that's the point when we want to consider making an application. When it comes to making the application, we have to pick what product we're going to use. Um, and so we've got six products that are labeled PFR proven. And those products, um, you can see there on your screen the list of them. But the one thing in common is they all contain multiple modes of action. And so having multiple ways of attacking that disease and that fungus is, is really important and, uh, and gets us better control. And those are the products that have risen to the top in our testing. And so I'm not too concerned about which brand of fungicide you use, but choosing one with multiple modes of action is most important. 
Um, lastly, I want uh, two tips on how to make the most of the application. So number one, spraying in the morning. Uh, we've seen about a $10 per acre advantage of spraying a fungicide in the morning versus the afternoon as far as the added, added yield benefit that we're able to get from that fungicide. And we think that's because the, it's cooler temperatures, so the plant is, um, the stomata on the plant are more open and able to take that fungicide in. And then if there's a dew present, that dew helps to spread that fungicide over the surface of the leaf and be able to cover um, a wider area of that leaf and uh, again, make that fungicide more effective. And so um, you may not be able to cover all your acres in the morning and that's perfectly fine. But when you have the opportunity to get applications done in the morning, you could gain an extra, extra $10 an acre based on uh, the results that we've seen in our testing. There's another potential gain um, in uh, yield that you can have and effectiveness of a fungicide, and that comes to gallons of water. So using 15 to 20 gallons is what we found is optimal in corn in our, our PFR testing. Again, about a $10 per acre uh, gain over using just 10 gallons per acre. And so um, running a little bit higher uh, rate of water, again, that helps to spread that fungicide over the surface of the leaf and uh, gets better coverage and makes that fungicide more effective. I know that that's not possible to run those kind of rates with an airplane um, and getting the, the fungicide applied at the right time is much more important necessarily than how many gallons of water or whether you use a ground rig or an airplane. Um, but when you have the opportunity to increase that gallons, those gallons of water, that definitely, definitely helps out. If you have any questions about fungicides or any of these topics we talked about or any other agronomic topic, feel free to reach out to your local BEX representative and they would be happy to help. Thank you. Thank you.